Welcome to this week's episode of Operation Support Local. I'm your host, Derek Fage. We have another great show for you this week, and we are going to start with a familiar name to many of you. It is Time and Again. And when Sheila White from Time and Again and her staff started donating and making soup for the needy here in our community, well, those donations started to roll in. Even Fogo Island Inn from Newfoundland donated enough fish for a thousand liters of soup. Well, Sheila and her team are gearing up again to help out those in our community, and our reporter Julie Buen had a chance to catch up with her. Sheila, you were one of the lucky ones who anticipated the lockdown happening the first time. Tell us what happened. We were lucky. I, um, I'm blessed to be married to someone who is a scientist and spent a lot of time following what was happening over in China ahead of time. So he did give us the heads up that this was coming. Not that we believed him right off the bat, but uh, when it did happen very, very quickly, we were prepared. We had hand sanitizer and we were set up um, to not close our doors. So we locked the kitchen down at Wellington Street, but we left this kitchen open. We put in protocols immediately. Um, we were only we only allowed our very small crew of four or five people in at the time. Um, no deliveries were allowed to come in or out of the building without, um, well, they just weren't allowed in and out of the building. So we met them at the loading dock um, and had very strict protocols in place right away. We had masks and hand sanitizer and the whole, the whole thing. So we're very lucky from that perspective and we're able to, you know, learn as we went as far as doing small uh, individually packed caterings, the frozen soup program, um, food for the Ottawa mission. So um, we just didn't have, we didn't have to close the kitchen and then learn how to reopen it. We just were able to modify and shift as we needed to. Because of our partnership with the Ottawa Mission, we were able to very quickly help support them. They were able to send us some product and some supplies, so it wasn't um, a burden on our um, business. And we were able to supply the staffing and the packaging to help um, produce that when they needed it the most. And we produced about 1,400 meals a week to complement their meals, and we started our soup program right away. We realized very quickly that there was a need in the community to get together and all work together, not only to support local, but also just to support all the people that were suddenly in a position of, you know, being locked down and not being able to get out. Um, so by starting that soup program, um, our community, our clients got online and, and started making donations for the soups. And we were able to produce the soups and get them back out to people that, that needed it. We had one wonderful client who walked in the door and wrote us a check for $10,000, if you could imagine. Um, regular customers come in on a regular basis and, and donate five or $600 at a time. We also had some of the farmers step up as the spring approached and they were making donations as well and that allowed us to continue to buy product from them and support them. So it was just a beautiful collaboration across the board. Everybody jumped on board and the kitchen was happy to, you know, to contribute and we all felt that there was, you know, we were doing something other than just trying to survive. We were actually contributing and everybody was contributing. So it was, it was awesome from that perspective. We're right now currently making 150 liters of soup per week, but we've made, I would say, five or 6,000, you know, easily since the pandemic. Probably more. I'd have to do the math, um, but lots, lots and lots and lots. Is there anything that we should be thinking about in supporting those charities in need? I think that as we move towards the winter months, I think everybody in the city has to be very aware of how blessed we were to have great weather this summer and people were able to get out and about and that's going to shift. So we do have to be much more aware of who our most vulnerable is and I really think we have to work together as groups. There are so many organizations in the city um, that are doing something and contributing and working together and I think it doesn't matter who but see what you can do to just step up and help them whatever it is whether it's driving or delivering food or you know someone has extra zucchini in their garden or if they can afford to donate some money to any of these organizations I just think we all have to work together we're smarter and wiser than we were the first time so how do we take that knowledge and apply it with some love and with some collaboration and, and just helping everybody. Um, well, we are in the second wave, yeah. but we're looking down the barrel of a second lockdown. Yeah. What, uh, and that's scary. Yeah. So uh, are you hopeful for the future if we are in a second lockdown? 
I am hopeful. I think, I think we know a lot more than we did the first time. I think people are much more aware of how this disease is passed. We're wearing masks, we're doing social distancing, uh, we're learning to, you know, have the next door neighbors in the garden at two and a half feet away so you can see them. I think there, people are finding different ways to do it and as long as we're mindful and conscientious about it and we support each other, I think we're going to get through to the spring and it's going to be a beautiful spring. That's what we have to focus on.